Hey everybody, it's Sarah Ayler from softlexcompany.com. I am going to be uh, showing you the knitting spool today. And I am uh, doing a fun little experiment. You know how I love an experiment. Hi, Gail. I, <laughs> I have been wanting to do this forever, you guys. I uh, took three different colors from the Mystical Trio and I took uh, one foot increments and I crimped them together into a long multicolored wire. And then I took that wire and I started knitting with it on the knitting spool. So I'm going to show you how to add wire uh, to it. If you want to do a multicolored uh, version, I'm going to show you how to use the magical crimpers um, as usual. And then I'm going to show you how to knit uh, the rest of my bracelet and then we'll take it off and put it together um, after as well. So we've got a whole lot of stuff to learn today. Um, I, if you're not familiar with Softlex, we are a beading wire manufacturer first and foremost. Um, we make beading wire in lots of different colors and diameters. We're most well known for our satin silver beading wire, um, but we also have it in lots of fun colors, which is what I'm going to be using today on the knitting spool. And um, I'm going to flip over to my hand cam so I can show you a little bit better what I'm talking about. So our butterfly garden uh, materials from Customer Appreciation Week are 20% off this week. So if you wanted to grab another mix or never got a mix, you can grab a butterfly garden bead mix. We have only a few left. And then some of the beautiful components that we used um, are also on sale. 20% off, and you can find that on our website, softlexcompany.com. But things like this beautiful butterfly, this spiral ring we brought in with Butterfly Garden, those are on sale. This gorgeous little uh, copper colored dragonfly button, those things are on sale uh, this week. So I encourage you to check that out. Also on sale is all of the trios. And so I'm using the mystical today, but you could use just about any trio uh, that we have in a similar way and, um, and come out with something really interesting. I have never done this before. I've never combined the soft flex with just a crimp. And so I don't even know, you know, how well or not well this is going to turn out. But I wanted to give it a try today. Hopefully you want to come along on the journey with me. And um, we're gonna we're gonna make a bracelet similar to this project that I did uh, quite a while ago, probably about a year ago, um, and I did it in two colors. So this is what it looks like if you do solid one color. You can put a bead in the center. You could also do a clasp, and it is just crimped on either side of that bead or clasp. And um, I was also thinking, gosh, how pretty would this be, you guys? One of these Luna moths in the center there, you could totally do that. Do a Luna moth in the center. That would be so beautiful. Really, really pretty. So that's what this looks like. This is a YouTube um, video project, and Damien will post a link for it so you can check out the full project on YouTube for just one solid color. Um, but today I'm doing multiple colors using the Mystical Trio, and I've just made like a really long length of wire, and I'm just ready to add a little bit more. I've knitted about four and a half inches and I want to get up to at least six inches because that's about the size of my wrist and then whatever I add in the center will give it a little bit more length uh, to fit me nicely. So to add more wire, first I got to get my my ruler out. You don't have to be have perfect measurements if you want. I'm, I've been doing one foot lengths just because I wanted to kind of keep track of what I was up to. It looks like I, I'm on to pink tourmaline is my next color. So I'm gonna grab my pink tourmaline and I'm gonna measure about one foot. And I did that just so that you could kind of see in the design what one foot looked like. Now maybe you want to um, 
spread it out more. Maybe you don't want the color to change quite that quickly. Then maybe you would do one and a half feet or two feet. And this is so far 15 pieces of wire. So, and I and I'm about four and a half inches. So you definitely are gonna need probably most of your trio if you get a trio. I'm gonna take my two ends and I'm gonna fuse them together using my crimp tube. How is everybody doing today? Becky says she loves that bead mix. I do too. Hi, Julie. It's nice to see all of you. I have been talking to some of my industry friends this week and we are recognizing that things are getting stressful again, really stressful. So make sure you're taking care of yourself out there, all of you, because things are hard and, um, and I'm just sending all of you a little bit of love. So hang in there. I think, you know, eventually we'll get past this again, but I know in the meantime, this has been kind of a rough few weeks. Um, so, you know, put your head down, get your beads out and focus in and take good care of yourself in the meantime. Okay, so I've got my two by two millimeter copper crimp tube. I have put both wires in that I'm fusing together in the two different colors. I put them both into the crimp tube in the opposite direction. So pink tourmaline is going in this way and spinel is going in this way. And I am going to take my magical crimpers, settle that crimp tube down in the center of my crimping plier and compress till I get a little four corner ravioli. And then I'm going to turn it on its side and compress again and just go around and around, tightening it down. So the good news is, guys, I am not changing my time slot. I will continue to be on at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, always yank on this because this is going to get a lot of stress when we're knitting. In fact, one of mine did break open and it isn't too big of a deal because you can just crimp a new piece of wire on. You just kind of back up and crimp as you may see happen to me even today. Um, but just gently give it a tug. If you can catch it early, it's better <laughs> than when you've already been knitting with it. So I will be on at 3 p.m. Pacific and uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. My kids will be going to school at home. So I am not changing my schedule. Um, if I look a little stressed out in the next few weeks, you'll know, you'll know why. Um, but uh, we are, we're gonna huddle down and, and make the best of it here. So they are doing independent study from home. And so my schedule gets to stay the same, which is the bonus. I'm really kind of excited to keep my normal time and my normal schedule. Um, okay, so I added my wire. See that? So I'm going from spinel to pink tourmaline. And then after that, I will fuse on some purple amethyst. And, um, and we'll add that on next. So I have started the knitting spool already a while ago. I've done this uh, a bunch of times on YouTube. And in fact, I had Damien uh, post a link to that video of the uh, knitted bracelets. So you can see how to get started there. I might, if you stick around at the end and I've taken it off this and finished the design, I might start one again so that you can see how to start it but we're gonna um, work our way to the ending in this case, because I just wanna see if this multicolor thing will work. I'm noticing like right here, we've got a little bit of a bubble. I think that's where I lost my crimp and I had to recrimp it. And so it ended up being a little wonky there. So I have a, I've learned a couple tricks along the way, so I will share them uh, with you for sure. And if you have any questions, pop them into your comments um, and let me know. And uh, I will be watching comments as I can and answering those questions.
questions, uh, both from YouTube and Facebook. So thank you for being here. And if you enjoy using Softflex Beading Wire, please do click like, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so when you're knitting with this pattern, there's different patterns of knitting too, but this pattern, you wrap over the top of your next cotter pin, you come in to the bottom, the very bottom, and you just gently pull that wire out and up and over. Now, when you're doing this pattern where you've got multiple colors of beading wire, you have to be extra gentle because the crimp bead um, is, is a strong connection, but it is not a perfect connection when it's being pulled on. So definitely make sure that you, um, you take your time go slow. You know, I feel like I brought knitting out because it is such a stressful time. And I feel like knitting and kumihimo, some of those ryth rhythmic exercises can be really, really nice when things are stressful. So I'm sorry to hear, um, sorry to hear if anyone's having a hard time out there. We are thinking about doing some joyful beading I am kind of cooking something up with the great bead extravaganza. I have been talking with them about a project that I want to do for September. So hopefully we'll be have some things coming on the horizon. I'm just gently pulling up and over. And you'll see I'd like take the pin slowly over. We'll have some fun things coming out on the horizon that can kind of help us, you know, all feel a little better. But I know this has been so tough lately and I feel you it's tough for everybody so just hang in there and know you are not alone <laughs> we're all kind of struggling in our own way lately but um, this is a great stress reliever this is a great way to just kind of decompress when you're having a rough time um, especially because it is so rhythmic. Once you get going, you're just kind of doing that same thing again and again. When I started, I went ahead and made up 15 feet of wire. So 15 segments, 15 uh, segments of three colors, five in each color. And so I didn't even have to stop and do that part. I could just kind of keep going and let it be real relaxing. I've been visualizing what this would be like in a um, rainbow, like yellow, green, red, blue would be really, really fun. Let's see what we've got uh, going on here. Becky says, I need to rearrange things in my room so I can get to my crafting stuff. Yes, you do, Becky. That's really, really important. Sheila says, I've never used Softlex wire on this tool, but years ago I knitted silver wire into a necklace with this tool. Yes, you can use silver. You can use craft wire. You can use threads and cords if you want to on this tool. It is not exclusive to Softlex beading wire. Softlex is nice because um, it holds a shape you know, because it is a wire and it creates a knit that makes it kind of spongy. And so it's nice that it can just sort of roll onto your arm. Ooh, this matches me today. <laughs> just roll it onto your arm and it looks really quite lovely. And so that's why I've like, I've enjoyed using Softlex. Softlex is also a uh, hypoallergenic unless you have a nylon allergy, which I've never heard of. It's really easy to wear and it's not going to bother your skin at all, which is nice and comes in lots of colors, which is cool too. So um, this is kind of the look we're going for, for those of you that have just joined us. And, but we're doing it in a multicolor version as a test to see if it'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna go just a little bit more and then I'm gonna add on my purple amethyst next. Maybe I should do one with like every Softlex color and then I can wear it and I can be like, whoa, look at all these Softlex colors. <laughs> so awesome. I definitely have to do the rainbow one before the yellow disappears because it's getting close. 
and um, and you need yellow for a rainbow. Okay, so I've got my purple here. I'm gonna measure out a foot. Go and grab one of those crimps. I'm using two by two millimeter crimp tubes in copper. I was feeling copper today. I grabbed out like all of our tiara cast in copper. Oh, these Luna moths are on sale too, you guys. And I think we have them in copper, silver, and gold color still. Um, but anyway, I was looking at what was on sale and I was like, you know, I don't do a lot in copper. Copper's kind of a fun fall color. And so I wanted to kind of grab some of that out and enjoy it. Okay, so I'm fusing together my next color. I've got my pink tourmaline. I've got my purple inside my two by two millimeter soft flex crimp tube. And now I'm gonna take my magical crimpers and compress. And you wanna make sure you're getting a really good fit. So yank on that thing, cause you're gonna be yanking on it with this knitting stylus. And if it's gonna fall apart, better figure it out now than have to deal with it later like I did down here. Okay, so I'm just right back where I was. Do you see how it kind of leaves off? I don't have to worry about where am I? It just, I know I'm going around the next peg. And then I go underneath. This is one of those tricky ones because if you see, it's got a crimp right on it. So I want to be a little extra gentle and pull it over. Now, if that crimp were to come off, it's totally okay. Just back up your design and crimp a new wire on. It's totally okay to like, you know, fix it, all right? But if you don't have to go through that, then why, why do it, right? Just be kind of gentle. And even if you don't have one right where you're working, you are pulling on the wire each time. So just be thoughtful of where, where that crimp is, how is it tugging, I know a rainbow design does sound fun. I would love to try that. Do you see how there's two wires left? And the bottom one goes over the top. So I've got my wires. I'm gonna come in and split those two bottom wires there so that I can grab the very bottom one, pull it up and over. These come in three peg, four peg, and five peg uh, sized knitting spools. And the difference will be a three peg will make a skinnier output and a five peg will make an even wider output. And the four is kind of in the middle. This is on a four as well. So if you want this to be bigger, wider, a uh, bigger diameter, then you'd get the five peg. If you want it to be skinnier, you like something daintier, then you might want to do um, the three peg. Also, you know, you could do this in metallics, like a copper and a brass, and maybe even like satin silver would be kind of fun to play around with. Maybe string some crystals down the center to give it a little extra sparkle. Could be a lot of fun. Kristen always loves a rainbow. She's my rainbow friend. And Kristen has a birthday, you guys. Kristen's birthday is coming up fast. And I sent her some flowers and I got a little picture of them today. And she deserves oodles and oodles of flowers and more. She is so such a great friend and coworker and mom, and wife, and artist. <laughs> so 
<laughs> um, so happy birthday, Miss Kristen. Can't imagine life without you. Yeah, do you see the color now? It's a little easier to see on the pink tourmaline and the purple when they're going together, how uh, the colors intermix. Thank you, Kara. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm so glad you like your bouquet. You deserve it, Kristen. You're amazing. I am surrounded by the most amazing Leos, you guys. I've got a Leo child. I've got my firstborn as a Leo. Her birthday's coming up too. I have got a Leo niece, two Leo nieces. I have got a Leo boss. I've got Leo coworkers. <laughs> I've got, um, I've just got um, a lot of Leos in my life. There's, and, and I always have had a lot of Leos in my life. My husband's a Leo. Did I say him already? I mean, it's really, my dad was a Leo. <laughs> it's like, uh, everybody I know is born this month or the end of last month. Isn't that cool how the colors transition? Yes, give Kristen some happy birthdays if you know Kristen. She deserves them. Okay, now we're going to change to spinel as our next color. You can see the purple to the spinel. So I'm going to grab out my spinel color. And you can do them all at once like I did to start. I'm just not sure how much I need here at the end. So I am taking my time. I'm curious to see how I'm going to feel about the crimps once it's all done and put together. Are they going to bother me that they're kind of random throughout the piece? Or is it going to feel like, oh, I barely see them? I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel. Okay, so I take my spinel wire through the crimp one direction, my purple amethyst through the crimp the other direction and then crimp it down. First you get that little four corner ravioli, then you spin it on its side and compress. And again, you wanna make sure you're getting that really good and test it. Not only will it get stress tested uh, when you're knitting, but also when you're stretching it over your hand, you're gonna have those crimps inside of there that are gonna be pulled just a little bit. I don't think it'll bother it too much because it's more the wire itself, the, the weave itself that's stretching. How fun is that? I've wanted to try this for so long. Thanks for coming along with me on the ride here, guys. Okay, so let's see how far along we are. I'm a little over five inches. We're shooting for about six inches. And then we're gonna pop this off of here and decide what we're gonna put in the center. You can do a clasp if you want. If you're doing a smaller clasp, you might, might wanna knit it just a little bit longer than your wrist size. If you're doing a ring or a bead that's bigger than six inches or whatever your wrist size is probably good. <laughs> Vicki says, we really need a rainbow necklace. Oh, uh, I know. We do. Maybe one of the prompts for Joyful Beating will have to be to make something with a rainbow. And I, um, I can do a rainbow 
knitted design that day. That would be so fun. And then it will be fun to see everyone's rainbows, especially when everyone's feeling kind of down and out. There's almost nothing better than a bunch of rainbow stuff happening. Oh, thank you, Joyce. Joyce says, love this idea. I see there may have been a question about a draw plate. Yes, Kara. Um, no, you do not need a draw plate. If you are doing a craft wire and or, or like a sterling silver wire, a gold filled wire, and you wanted to compress it into a thinner diameter, then you would use a draw plate. Softflex, if it went through a draw plate, would just simply pop back out. It's, um, it creates a woven, um, like a woven encasement with this particular uh, knitting pattern. And it's stretchy, which is fun, but it also uh, just kind of pops. So no draw plate needed. Isn't that fun, you guys? Let's see. Any other questions? Yeah, it won't change yet. Won't change the size. It'll always stay this size. If you want to change the size, if you want it to be thinner, then you would choose a three pin knitting spool. And if you wanted it to be thicker, then you would choose a five peg knitting spool. Okay, let's keep going. Looks like I'm about to add on a pink tourmaline wire which I think will be my 18th foot. So here's a really good gentle spot. See how I'm connected there and I'm pulling over. You wanna really, really, really tug on that. Um, even though I tugged on it to start, I don't want to, I don't wanna make that little crimp slide off of there. So if you tug just a little too hard, Sometimes those crimps will uh, pull the nylon off of the soft flex. So, and then it'll slide off. So you want to be, you know, be thoughtful. Don't be rough. This is supposed to be a relaxing project. If you want to make this fuzzy, you could choose a fuzzy yarn. You could do the soft flex um, with the fuzzy yarn if you wanted it to spring out like this, but also give you that fuzzy feeling. That's one um, option. Vicki's saying a woven spring loaded rope. Yes, kind of. Kind of similar to a woven spring loaded rope. Okay, so we're getting close. We're going to add another wire on. It looks like we're due for a pink tourmaline. This is our 19th foot of wire. It's not a perfect foot. I'm, I'm not measuring it exactly, but about a foot. And then, you know, I'm cutting a little tiny bit off when I crimp on each end. So it's not exact, but close enough to kind of give it that look where you can see each distinct color. I'm going to string my two by two millimeter crimp tube on my spinel wire, and then I'm going to string my pink tourmaline wire the opposite way. And leaving just a little bit of wire on each end so that um, I'm getting a nice, good, nice, strong connection. And then I can just trim off that excess little bit of wire. If you tug too rough, boing, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't be too rough with it. And yes, it should make a boing noise. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm going to just tug a little bit and spending some time with me. I hope everything's going okay for you and your family. 
If not, I'm sending you some love. We had a really nice GBE meeting um, last night. If you don't know what GBE, it's the Great Beat Extravaganza. You can join our Facebook group. And uh, we have an event coming up in November. And I'm trying to do something a little sooner than that. Um, so join the group. At any rate, the presenters all got together last night. And I could just feel everyone's just a little little down, you know, it's a little, it's tough. It's tough being a small business owner or manager. It's tough. Um, it's tough being a creative, just being a creative person when things are collectively difficult. So if you guys want to tell me what, what do you do to get inspired when you're feeling down you're having a hard time. I know we had a post about this recently in the um, Softflex VIB group where someone had posted that they were feeling down and our wonderful community gave them some suggestions. But what do you guys think here on the video? What do you do when you're feeling uninspired or down to kind of get yourself going again and, um, and feel inspired? Let's see, Vicki says, do you need to make sure the wires aren't crossed? Yeah, they should never be crossed. So let me show you what that means. So we've got two wires down here. They're side by side. One is gonna just naturally sit on top of the other. You're always taking that bottom one up over the top and I guess it does cross it here. But do you see how it pulls the next two wires right in line? And they're just side by side. Neither one should be crossed over the other one. It should be two straight wires. And then I just gently pull from the bottom and that kind of pulls it down. And then I move on to the next one. And on the next one, I'm going to split those two bottom wires grab the most bottom one and pull up. And then I've got my two straight wires again. We have a, a bunch of knitting videos on our YouTube channel. I think this is one of the best ones because I do it from beginning to end. And so it gives you like a really good viewpoint of how to make a knitted bracelet using soft flex beading wire. So definitely check this out after this live video if you want um, to learn a little bit more and get some really clear instructions. See how I have a crimp there? So here's another spot where I want to be real careful. And then this is even kind of a tricky, when I'm going around is a little tricky because what's gonna happen is this is gonna pull under and you don't want it to catch on your wires. See how it pulled all the way through, which is fine, but if, you, if it catches, it can tear it. So just be real mindful of those crimps as you're going. Let's see how close we are now. Ooh, we're pretty good. I'm gonna try to knit up just a tiny bit more. But I think I'm pretty good. These are stretchy, so that's helpful. So when I say six inches, let me move this back. I am measuring with my kid's ruler. <laughs> I'm measuring from this bottom part all the way to the top there. Now to finish this off, I'm going to take this end piece of wire and I'm going to string it into the loops on each of the pegs. So I'm going to pick this next loop first and just kind of pull this up to the top of your cotter pin. And then I usually kind of just tweak this back a little bit with my nail, and then I can slide this inside of those loops. 
I didn't leave myself much of an end here to work with, which wasn't the, the best idea. In fact, maybe I'll go back and undo one loop so I can give myself just a little more, a little more wire, make it easier. I'm gonna do that on each of the four pins. So I'm putting the wire through the two loops on the inside of the peg. And I'm gonna do that on all of them. Once that's done, I'm gonna take my first loops off. It can be a little tricky on the very first ones to get them off this cotter pin. Just kind of go slow. It'll come off eventually. And then the other ones are much easier. You pull it off. And then to close up your top, you just take your wire and pull it closed. We're gonna use an end cap from Tierra Cast on the end that is gonna hide all that funny business on the end here. Let's see. Oh, I love Vicky's idea. Vicky says, I always take screenshots of really special ideas when I'm creatively empty and I'll go through the photos and the ideas come flooding back. I love to hear that idea. That's a great idea. Joyce says, I like looking at fabric and decorative paper for color combinations when I'm stuck on which colors I want to bead with. Also a great way to help get myself out of my go-to colors. Those are great ideas. You know, I love to um, go on Pinterest. I like to do it not only with jewelry making, but I also love to cook. Um, that's one of my, my big hobbies. And so I like to go on Pinterest and see what the most popular recipe is. So I just took that end and strung it into my end cap. We have these on our website. Um, they are made by Tierra Cast, made in the USA. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we can kind of decide what is it that we want to put in the center of this sweet little bracelet. I have a couple ideas. I really like the spiral ring, and since it's on sale this week, I was thinking it's probably a pretty good, um, a pretty good option. I was also thinking about this beautiful moth because I think that could be really pretty on one of these designs. Um, but maybe I'll save that for more moth-like colors. I feel like this is more of a butterfly-like color. So that's an option. We also have the hammer tone rings um, in multiple different sizes. Let's see, we've got them in three sizes. So those are an option that you can find on our website. Um, you could do a clasp if you wanted to. You can make it a little longer and then do one of these cool magnetic clasps so it just whips around your wrist and and connects real easily. Oh, did you see it just attached to the <laughs> to the tray? Um, you could do beads. You know, you could take a bead from the butterfly garden design mix and uh, put that as your centerpiece like I did here. So lots of different options for personalizing it. I still think this like with the right set of colors, this moth in the center would just be so fabulous. It almost looks a little bit like a cocoon. Hmm, really fun. I'm gonna do that one of these days. I'm gonna make a rainbow one and I'm gonna make one with the moth. <laughs> Um, I'm liking it. I, I don't really mind those little bits of copper crimps. 
they don't bother me. I thought they would more when I was making it than they actually do. You can also string some beads down the center if you want to, if you want to add a little bit of um, sparkle. You can put some beads in there. I don't know if this is big enough for this bead, but let me see. Let me see if it'll go in. Yeah, this bead's a little too big. So this might be better with the five peg if you wanted to get those really beautiful vintage crystals that we have on the website. Might be better. Is that like a 10 millimeter? String some beads in there. It's just You can just even stuff them in. They're not going to fall out. If you want to just stuff some down in there. Or you can string them so it's a nice straight strand. Totally up to you. I'm kind of thinking I should put some beads in here. Should I just go random and just stuff a bunch of these butterfly, bunch of beads from the butterfly um, mix in here? Let's just do it, right? So they're just going to move down that center. Let's see. It's kind of a bright pink. Stuff one of these guys in there. Isn't that fun, you guys? Go for it, she says. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Why not, right? I guess I could probably just take it all the way to the other end here. Just wiggling it down. I'm wondering if the shape might be a little hard to do that way. Let me see if I do it this way, it might work better. I'm gonna put a metallic bead in. I think I'm doing copper colors though. I could do one of these. You wanted to add a little bit of metal in there. You can always do something like that from TierraCast. And this is just gonna make a little bit of sparkle on the inside so when I'm wearing it and I'm like outside, you're gonna see those little beads sparkle it up a little bit. See what other good beads we have in a good size. Maybe one of these purple ovals. This would be a nice way if you've got some leftover beads at the very end of a project where you don't need to see them really clearly be a nice way to kind of use up some some things in your stash that maybe you're not you'd like to use let's see let me do another one of these Crazy. 
It's not fun, you guys. Oh, hey, Patty. I'm so glad you're baby shopping. That sounds fun. Let's see, Christian says, possibly put some color on the crimps if it bothers anyone. That is a great suggestion. Christian, you could take a little bit of the vintage patina and you can paint those crimps, like maybe a purple or a pink, and then they would even fade in even more um, if they're bothering you that they're not like perfectly aligned. They kind of just fall where they fall on this design. So that's a great suggestion. I like that. And Becky says she likes the beads inside because it'll keep it from smashing down when you put your arm down on the table. Yeah, I like that. Kara says she's going to go check out the knitting spool. That's awesome. Good to hear. Vicki says she's used some of Neele from Silver Silk's Galaxy Wire and stuffed it with beads too. Oh, that's awesome. I love Neele's um, Silver Silk. He does such a great job. I like how it pops into its original form too. Yeah, even when you kind of um, squeeze it, it just pop, pop, <laughs> pops right back out, which is nice. Maria's suggesting you could do alcohol pens or um, in order to paint on the crimps. That's another great, great suggestion. I love beating with you guys. We really have such a nice group here uh, that hang out and I really, really enjoy it. So thank you for being here with me and spending a little bit of your day. We always love seeing you. This would be a great way to use a bead that has a hole that's stuck. You know, like if something's stuck in your bead hole, you're not sure what to do with it. And stuff it in a bracelet. Easy peasy. Right, I'm coming down to the end here. And I'm going to do one more bead and then just pull this up. And then if you remember, we we're going to put some here. And that kind of hides all those funky ends on the end of your design. Okay, I think I'm going to do this to the ring is what I'm thinking. And then I might try to figure out a nice way to hang this cute little butterfly from it too, because I think that could be really sweet. I'm gonna take my crimp. And pass through my ring. I'm going to get just a little bit. I'm going to look for a crimp tube that's just a little longer. Some of these that I have ended up being extra short for some reason. I think I got a batch of rejects, <laughs> as I often do. And I don't know. I'm a little nervous. I might use the regular crimping pliers and a um, crimp cover here just to make sure that that crimp really is attaching solidly. And I'm just maneuvering my wire down. So I want to get my crimp close to my end cap. My attachment, not to be too big, but I want it to be big enough that it's comfortable. It's not really tight around the ring. And um, let me get out my regular crimping pliers and we'll do a bead, a bead cover. Sometimes at these stressed places, I get a little bit nervous. Oh, well, I may not have a choice. It doesn't look like I have them here. Doesn't look like I have them here, so we're gonna take the chance. 
I normally wouldn't. Usually when I say that, I'm right, but we're gonna take the chance and use the magicals. They've been holding up throughout here, so. I'm gonna center that print tube and hold this just a little bit. Compress. Get my little four corner ravioli. The only reason I worry about it on a design like this is this particular crimp is going to get a lot of stress. As it's going over my hand onto my wrist, it's going to have um, it's going to have a lot of stress on it. So I'm going to yank on that. If if I want to, I could string this back in here. In this case, normally I wouldn't. But in this case, I will, just in case it does give, then at least it gives me a little more wire so I could attach it again rather than it just falling, falling apart. Okay. And then I'll come in as close as I can to trim. And there we go. Now I'm gonna do it on the other side too. I'm feeling like it's a little small. That's also my concern. So let's test it. Oop. fit my wrist really nicely but because I put the beads in it it has less give so this stretches tighter and so it stretches wider and so I want to think about that as I'm doing it do I want to go ahead and crimp it and try to just roll it up over my hand or do I want to come up with a little solution um, that will make me feel better about it. So that's where I'm at, because I could do something with this butterfly, possibly, if I wanted to lengthen it a little bit. I do have uh, some beads as well. I think I'm just gonna finish it off and take that chance. and hope it'll go over my hand. Once it's all crimped, it'll feel big enough. Wow, that's looking good. Doesn't that look good, you guys? I'm gonna pat myself on the back for a minute. <laughs> What's I'm so impressed. I brought it up to the camera and I thought, holy smokes, I did a really good job. <laughs> If you're liking this design, will you please give me a heart or a thumbs up if you're on YouTube? I want to see what you guys are thinking. I know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I want to see what you guys are thinking too. Are you liking it? What colors do you want to try it in? What about the Tranquility Trio, like the blues, the Tanzanite, the dark blue lapis? Um, oh, what else is in that trio? That would be pretty. Mermaid Lagoon. Ooh, that'd be pretty. That's a good trio. We have a lot of trios to choose from, and they're all on sale this week, 20% off. And any one of them would work on this design. Oh, how funny. I ended up with two different colors on the ends. I didn't even think about wherever you finish off that you might want to finish off on the same color because you're going to have connections. Not that it really matters too much, but if that bothers you, that's something you can learn from uh, my lesson here. And if you want a bigger sized bead here, you can still put a crimp cover on your um, crimp tube, even if you did magical crimping. So there's that option to a three millimeter crimp cover. 
and that'll just add like more of a substantial size. Give that thing a good yank. Oh, I was going to feed it back in, wasn't I? Oh, well. Do as I say, not as I do. Wow, that turned out great. I'm super excited about this. Let's see what Paula's saying. Paula says she's going to get hers out and decide which colors to use. Maybe blues or you could do the rainbow. If you make one, will you post it in the VIB group? Because I would love to see this in some other colors. Um, thank you for all those hearts and thumbs ups. I see them as they come in and that makes me feel extra special. Thank you for doing that. I see uh, so I see Marisol's here and she said that it looks like an accordion. It does, yes. Awesome. Okay, here's the test. Let's all pray it doesn't snap and break because it's a little small. Will it make it over the hand? Woohoo! And there you go, folks. What a fun design. And you can go back in and paint those crimps. I kind of don't mind them. So they're kind of interesting. And then if you want to wear this on top, here, maybe take off my other bracelet. Wear this on top, you show off that cute little spiral ring. You could also do the Luna Moth if you wanted to. I think that would be super cool. I would love to do that. Oh yeah, I was gonna add my little butterfly to it too. You could do the Hammer Tone Ring if you prefer that style. That's another good option. You could do these and do a, um, a clasp in the center. One of these little magnet clasps. That would be fun. You can take a big bead. Just do a big bead from the butterfly garden mix in the center. Totally okay. Um, now I want one in every trio. <laughs> There's not enough hours of the day. I want to make one in every trio. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can add on this cute little butterfly. I have a little piece of wire here. I might as well just use that. If you're going to do a jump ring, you're going to need a pretty big jump ring. I have one of those here too, but I think, um, I think I'm okay with doing this wire. Got my crimp tube, my butterfly. These butterflies are double-sided, so it doesn't matter which way you use them. They're so cute, they go on just about everything. I have some designs I'll show you guys here at the end that I pulled out that use them. I'm just making a little soft flex jump ring using the spinel colored beading wire that was left over. You just go in and crimp. And then trim. If you want to use, like I said, just a jump ring, you could totally do that. You're going to need a pretty big one on a design this size. If you want to hang this uh, over here on the side, you could do that too rather than in the center but I'll leave that, I'll leave those decisions up to you if you decide to make one as well. So some of the other designs I have, you guys, I'm obsessed with these earrings. I think I made these on an Instagram reel. I've worn these almost every day since I made them. I've just, they're so easy to wear. It's a vintage crystal. We have some of these still on our website. And then some 18 gauge Softlux craft wire and just a link with that cute little butterfly at the bottom. I need to make them in every in every metal tone. Like the, we have copper, gold, and silver. I think we just have the copper butterflies left um, at this point. 
or maybe the gold butterflies and the copper butterflies. Um, but these are my go-to earrings right now. I just, I feel like I can wear them with just about anything. And then they just bring me joy. We talked a lot at GBE about what we're doing to bring ourselves joy. And um, this is the kind of thing that brings me joy. Just like a little butterfly and a sparkly crystal really does it for me. Even on a day when I'm not doing a video and I'm not wearing a lot of jewelry, I'm just hanging out around my house because I work from home. My family's all home. It's nice to put on that little bit of jewelry that makes me super happy. I made this one on the great bead extravaganza Instagram using uh, one of those Luna mods. So you can find that there. And these Luna mods are 20% off this week at softluxcompany.com. If you wanted to grab one in any of the metal tones, we have all three. And then we also have this cool lips clasp. It's not on sale. Just the butterfly garden materials are on sale this week. So that includes the Luna Moth, it includes the cute little butterflies. Um, this I made with the Butterfly Garden design kit, but it doesn't have a lot of stuff in it that's on sale because I think most of this stuff was kit only materials. This bead mix is on sale, um, and there's some extra beads in here from my kit, so it's not. Every bead here isn't part of the bead mix, but most of them are. And you'll see a pretty clear picture on the Softlux website of the entire bead mix. It's really pretty. It's got some purples and pinks, all the colors that I was using today, because um, these three colors of beading wire came in that kit. And so the beads matched um, the beading wire. Really, really cool. What else do I have here? Oh, here's one with the copper butterfly. And then uh, we had these clasps, but those sold out. And you can still get the carrier beads on the website. This is an Instagram Reels project as well. If you're looking for some fast paced inspiration, go to our Reels page, uh, to our Instagram page and look at our Reels. Here is the butterfly garden uh, necklace that I made. And I thought I used the mystical trio, but it looks like I used tanzanite pink tourmaline and purple amethyst and braided up the back. Got a little maker's clasp in the back, but these are beads from that butterfly garden bead mix that's on sale. And then of course the pendant is from our good friends Andrew and William at Allegory Gallery. And then just two more um, moth designs. I did this one really on the fly to match an outfit that I was wearing <laughs> that I really wanted to match something to. I made it right before, um, right before a video. It had one of those butterfly toggles too. I like this one that it uses some of those tear cast metal beads. Um, I feel like those are really underrated. They are really fantastic for adding a touch of metal and making things look really upscale and elegant. So be sure to check those out. And then this was from our kit, our renewal kit, which the moth came in. So if you enjoyed that renewal kit, you can get more of those moths now for a limited time um, till they're gone. When they're gone, they're gone and they are 20% off. So that's all she wrote, folks. I made a mess. I made a pretty fantastic bracelet that I'm really pretty jazzed about. <laughs> and now, oops, and now I wanna make one in every color, of course. I'm wearing one of Andrew's pendants today, too, in this necklace. Um, so yeah, that's it. We've got 20% off on our butterfly garden category at softlexcompany.com. It is Kristen's birthday week. So we are celebrating Kristen this week. And this is kind of a perfect mixture of items for her um, because she, I don't, I feel like the purples and pinks are really, um, really kind of perfect. Even though she's a green person, she 
loves green. I feel like this is a good fit um, for her this week. So we are celebrating her. Make sure you let her know happy birthday when you get the chance. And uh, her birthday is on the 15th. So it is coming up quickly. Beverly said, how long did it take to knit the bracelet? I started it earlier today. It took me no more than an hour. I wouldn't say any more than an hour. I was knitting it pretty quickly. Nate Damien is here. He was watching me. I was like, how far can I knit this before the live show starts? <laughs> Knitting as fast as I could, and I got pretty far um, on it. So yeah, I think I think definitely no more than an hour for knitting that. Marisol says that she's a birthday month sister with Kristen. Are you a Leo, Marisol? I love Leos. So many great Leos out there. Um, let's see. Tony says she entered a couple necklace earring sets in the county fair and won best of show using some supplies from Softlex. That's awesome, Tony. Congratulations. I love hearing that. Um, Vicki's asking about the mugs. Thank you for asking about the mugs, Vicki. We've got uh, one more thing coming from Jesse James Beads. We have a package coming from Just Beat It. And I did start putting some things together yesterday or the day before. Whenever I was at the office, I started putting some things together. Um, but I'm waiting on some materials to get here. So my guess is they won't ship, they definitely won't ship this week probably not next week, but probably the week after. And that's because next week school starts and we have a live sale on Thursday. And so um, it's gonna be a pretty busy week, but I will do my best to get them out just as quickly as I can. And I did dig through my Swarovski crystals. Um, so there are Swarovski treats in every single one. Um, I will say the Swarovski treats may not match everything else that I put into the package. So because I was uh, de-stashing my Swarovskis. So that means that some of the Swarovskis may not perfectly match, but it is a beautiful Swarovski treat. Hopefully you enjoy, um, enjoy what you end up getting in that and um and hopefully that gets kind of excited exciting to think about barb says just in time for fall flavored coffee yes pumpkin spice time is coming isn't it yeah there's a little swarovski in every single package i went through once upon a time swarovski sent me a huge box of beads huge like a huge box I even emailed them and I was like, did you send this to me on accident? <laughs> but they were all discontinued Swarovskis. And over the years, I've de-stashed them in a lot of different kits and things that we've done. I don't have many left. They also used to send me these little um, new product uh, boxes. And so I have a bunch of those. So I went through some of those as well. So yeah, so there's gonna be something interesting in your box for sure. And uh, as well as some other really fun things that are kind of California related from Softlex and then some treats from, you know, Tierra Cast and Jesse James Beads, and Just Beat It and a bead place and Silver Silk. So, oh, and I'm waiting on Neelay's Silver Silk too. So yeah, probably two weeks before they ship, but I, I hope, I really hope they're worth the wait, and I do hope you get that you get them in time for pumpkin spice season. Vicky says we're off ski stash. Yippee! Always a huge creativity design explosion. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. I think you're gonna like it. I think it's gonna be good. So that's it. Um, any other questions? I'm off Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Joshua has his his um, procedure tomorrow for the melanoma. So I will be off and taking care of him. And then um, we have a big birthday this weekend. My oldest turns seven. 
And then we have back to school next week. So even though we're doing independent study, it is always kind of a tricky thing to get used to our new schedule. So I'm off for a few days, but I will be, uh, I will be back next week. And I will be here Wednesday for a demonstration. And then I will be here Thursday for a live sale. The live sale will start at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursday of next week. Uh, Helen's asking what box. We're talking about the uh, customer appreciation mugs. You would have had to have pre-ordered one in order to get one and pre-orders are all done. And now I'm just working on wrapping them up. Beverly's asking, is it true Swarovski is stopping the crystal selling? I believe it is true. Yeah, we've never purchased Swarovskis ourselves, so I don't have the in on on that. But I do think that they're they're stopping selling beads into the craft industry. I've heard some mumblings that maybe they would sell to a couple of distributors, and then everybody would have to get it through those particular distributors. But I don't really know. I'm not. I'm not by no means a Swarovski. Um, expert and yes i know life is good thank you guys for uh celebrating my daughter's birthday and for the prayers and thoughts for my husband's surgery um and i can't wait for you to get your mug too christian i am excited too I think you're going to like, I used mine this morning for my coffee and I was like, ooh, I got to get these out to everybody. We will. As soon as I get all the stuff, I got to get all the stuff and then I got to get it all sorted. Um, but hopefully. Um, Vicky's saying that Candy Cooper is a distributor for Swarovski and she has a lot of stash. So if you're looking for Swarovski crystal, maybe check out Candy Cooper's Etsy shop. That would be a good place. Um, thank you to everybody. Have a wonderful day. I will post a picture of this on our Instagram if you want to take a closer look. And of course, in our Softlex VIB group, which is the place to hang out if you're looking for a supportive crowd. And uh, we are talking about doing joyful beating. So look for that calendar when we get it together and hopefully we can do some extra beating together in the weeks to come and de-stress and uh, and just take care of each other out there you know if you can go the extra mile to show somebody that extra little bit of kindness do it because everyone's stressed and um and that little bit of kindness goes a long ways all right. Bye, everybody. You can, of course, shop on our website, which is softlexcompany.com.